This video is the second in a series of five short presentations that provide highlights of the James Bryce House Restoration Project. The lengths that we're going to to save original fabrics, the responsibility I think we feel. I do think that's part of this bigger story about why this project is different and why the restoration itself is so important. My name is Raymond Canetti. My name is Chris Mills. I'm an architectural conservator. Uh, I'm a mason and I specialize in historic restorations. We're working on the finishes and trying to understand what the original finishes were and how to remove some of the post-historic materials. start by a mortar analysis called a digestion analysis. In the Chesapeake, when they're first arriving, one of the things they found was is there were no readily available sources of limestone. The thing that there were was many, many, many shells. It's all about what's available. Fresh shells are calcium carbonate, but after they're fired, they're no longer calcium carbonate, they're calcium oxide. They had two parts burned shell to one part of sand. Luckily, we were able to find a sand that matches the sand in our sample over at the Carroll House. It's probably the only surviving section of undisturbed shoreline in Annapolis. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting ready to slake our shells and they'll be converted again from calcium oxide to calcium hydroxide. We don't have to slake the lime and then add the sand to it. Everything's happening in the same pile. Once the reactions happen and we're ready to make mortar, all we do is we cut off a section of it and then mix it up and use it. In this case, we're actually burning our shell right here. It's extremely efficient, it's easy to do, and we are now making mortar using that sand and our burned shell. And then we brought in Dr. Susan Buck to take samples from the various architectural elements in the house. And so she did uh, uh, analysis that told us not only the color of those paints, but um, the pigments and, and the, the various um, things about those paints that she could so that we could re recreate it in the restoration. So it's very difficult to match color uh, using these limited pigments that, that we find in the cross section. We're matching it exactly, so it's harder for us uh, to get these colors right, so we're a little more sensitive to that. There are a couple different techniques for simulating materials and period finishes. And these, these panels, wall panels, are plaster. Uh, they are not wood. So they used a sanded finish to the plaster to give that space uh, the look of, of perhaps stonework, maybe yellow sandstone. But we also mixed this into linseed oils, mixed it with hide glue to make a distemper, essentially a chalk, uh, water, and pigment. And you mix pigment with it, and it gives a very flat, subtle, texture to the paint that's, that's very refined. We're looking uh, to throw our eyes on what this wood graining looked like. We can see in cross-section that it, there's clearly a glaze on there, which is, and there's a base color for the wood graining, but we can't see what it is. We've only found tiny little microscopic evidence of it there. So much of this woodwork had been stripped in the 1950s. Chris needed, needs to recreate for us the graining that was used on the woodwork. And then they'll take a feather, a rag, um, a, a comb or something and drag it through um, the, the, the top coat of paint before it dries to give uh, the graining pattern. And we're putting a traditional beer wood graining on top of it that looks to us like uh, a mahogany. What's really great about the recreations is that we know that the cornice was whitewashed 
It, it's whitewash on plaster, which is a very traditional finish. Analysis has shown that there is a slurry that was made and with, it looks like a lime material or plaster, and sort of sloughed all over here, sort of muting what was going on. So whoever made this cornice, um, they're using plaster of Paris, and they mixed it up well. It fitted in the forms just right. They took it out. We can take the modern paints off, and it's in really good shape. Here, we don't think this could have been pulled out of a mold because it curves over, and it's, um, so that would have to be attached. And it's very, very tedious work. Pointing is a masonry term. We rake out the joints about inch and a half to two inches, and then we point in the shell mortar. We want to keep uh, a lot of the, the old historic layers, but take off a lot of the modern ones. When the wet mortar does eventually dry, it is going to be the color of the pointing that we've done already. And we will be putting back the original um, finish, which was be an untinted lime wash, which is white. And all of that is made to work together. Over here, which are areas of original pointing, you can actually see the point of the mason's trowel. We took cross sections of the, um, the before, and this is in, in the dining room. And those cross sections show us exactly where we are and where we want to be. I think we counted up to um, about 18 or 19 layers. These are modern versions of a muller, which is the handheld part, and the slab, which is the stone that you grind on. You know, it adds to the authenticity of, of what we're doing. It's referred to as a caulking trowel. It's a very finely made tool designed to do this specific work. They're wrought iron and not steel. Not much different than than the tools we've used today. The brush stroke is actually part of the final finish. These big brushes are very important because the, the paint itself sort of holds a brush stroke and doesn't lay down like modern paint. We can say, well gosh, this guy was a very accomplished mason. All his work is very uniform and neat and faced really well. And then we'll see other sections, well, they haven't been done with as much care. We want to teach these masons, help them become familiar with historic technique and historic materials and how to properly use them. There's a lot of modern materials that through the years have been put on these walls and sort of distorting what the detail is. All of the modern layers of paint stripped off, I think we'll get it back to the detail that you see across the room. And we've had, a, to be fair, we've had big debates over just how responsible it is to take these modern paints off uh, and then having to do a lot of intervention to fix that early plaster. And where we have come down on um, the, this issue is we think we right now we have the expertise, the will, and hopefully we'll be able to raise the money to be able to do it well once so that it will last another 250 years. Thank you.